Thank you so much for coming. This is very exciting. I am Brie Emery. I live here in Los Angeles. I blog at Design Love Fest, like he was saying. I'm an art director, and I also teach Blog Shop, which teaches people, bloggers, small businesses, how to use Photoshop and make their internet presence look amazing. Let me see how to work this. So that's me. <laughs> We're going to start the stool. <laughs> This is really not going to happen. Joni, you're fired. <laughs> We're going to stand. OK. So this was actually really exciting, besides being very nervous. This was so exciting to kind of look back through my history, my career path, and kind of connect all the dots together. I had never really done it. And it's really fascinating to, to look back and kind of document it all. So we're going to start back in high school. <laughs> where there was a lot of teen angst and painting furniture bright colors. This was my journal. I carried it everywhere with me. I would be in the back of class cutting out magazines and taping them wow. into here. So I've always been really obsessed with documenting inspiration. It's really important to me. There's lots of feelings of being misunderstood, <laughs> bad poetry, and, you know, bright colors happening in here. But what's interesting is part of the theme of this talk is how, when I looked back at it, everything kind of makes sense now. It all ties back together. Looking back at that, that was just my blog in the early days. I would have my friends kind of fill out pages, and that was kind of like guest posting now, or the contributors now <laughs> on the blog. So I was like, I've been doing this for a long time now. Um, me and my friends started a furniture company called Mod, and we would buy stuff from Goodwill and paint it bright colors, and we only sold two pieces to <laughs> a good friend of mine who felt bad about it. But we were very excited to just work and like be creative together. So I'm excited about the theme of make, because make to me is just hanging out with other creative people making cool things. That's just what this space is about. That's what I'm all about. So make. Eventually, I went on to Arizona State. There's a page in there that said, I know what I want to do. I want to work at Nylon Magazine. I've got to go do graphic design so I can do that. So I moved to Arizona. My dad lives there. So I, I moved there. Um, major in gra graphic design. And there's one guy that stands out to me a lot, Andy Weed. He made me cry all the time. <laughs> he was my teacher, and he was very, very hard on me. He definitely taught me about pre precision and being a perfectionist. I remember I would turn in my projects, and maybe like the corner would be bent, and he would just throw it on the ground and be like, why would you not start over? And I'd be like, I stayed up all night on this, dude. But he, he was so hard on me, and I feel like I owe a lot to him for being the perfectionist that I am now. Two years into Arizona State, I was in the shower, and I decided I need to move to California. That's where I'm supposed to be. So I applied to the Fashion Institute downtown, got in, and was gone a few months later. I moved by myself. Another theme of this is the scariest decisions were always the best ones for me. This one was a very scary one. I was moving there with no friends. No, I didn't know anyone here. so. That was one of the best decisions I made. I've been here seven years now and have no plans on leaving. I did a bunch of internships before that. Nine, when I moved here, 944 Magazine, Petrol, Movie Poster Place. I worked out of this guy's house. I did a bunch of, I just basically said yes to anything. I was excited to be here and working and just doing anything. And then a month before I graduated, I started feeling nervous. Like, I'm not going to have any jobs. Like, which I still feel all the time. So I applied to a job on Craigslist called Vmoda, and I got the job. I was very excited. I was doing packaging as a junior designer there, marketing materials, and 
um, working on this stuff. I was so excited because my, my designs were ending up in Apple, and it felt very, very cool as a young designer to be working on this. But I had an art director above me that, I hope he's not watching, <laughs> but <laughs> he kind of held me back. He didn't make me feel very great about myself. I was really sense. I mean, it's all like creative people. You're very sensitive, especially when you're starting out. And he would constantly kind of knock me down. I felt like I, I wasn't very good at all. I didn't even really know. If maybe I wasn't doing the right thing. Maybe I needed to go do something else. So during that time, I decided to start a blog. I was reading all sorts of blogs all the time at work, trying to get inspired and figure out what I loved. So I thought, well, why not start my own? So I started Design Love Fest. I don't know if you guys see this amazing title of my first post. Hello, party people. <laughs> I don't know why I did these colors and large. It's not, it's not great, but I loved this thing. I did it like 20 times a day. I was like, screw that guy. I'm into this now. So I was doing this constantly and started freelancing a little bit and finding my own voice. And you know, I think oh, when I look back at it, he was, he was hard on me, but maybe our aesthetics just weren't really lining up perfectly. We had different interests. So freelance for me was definitely my outlet to find out what I really liked and the design that inspired me. I started um, guest posting on a few blogs that had quite a bit of traffic at the time. Um, oh Joy, SF Girl by Bay, which are now really good friends of mine. And they kind of showed me the ropes. Like I learned about columns and blogging and the back end of it. I, I really was learning so much. I was excited learning. And I got cocky. I'm like, I'm going to quit. Because I know what I'm doing now. I really didn't. But I was feeling very like, I got to get out of this environment that was making me feel so bad. My blog was making me feel so good. But I would go to the 9 to 5 job and I just didn't feel that great. It didn't feel like what I was supposed to be doing. So one day I walked in and I quit my job. And then I left and I was like, what did I just do? <laughs> a few months later, maybe like two months later, I was asked to be in a Photoshop, or Photoshop, in a photo shoot at my friend Jen's studio, um, Bando. And it was for Rue Magazine. They asked me just to be in it with my friends at this ice cream social photo shoot. And that day is when I met so many people that are now in my life. I, it's crazy how, even something like this, you can meet so many people that influence your life later. Um, I met Max and, and uh, Michael and all my future like coworkers in my new space. And I really was just like excited to meet all these people. And that was the day that I became the art director for Rue. They needed um, a designer. And I just said yes. I didn't really know if I knew how to do that. But I always just said yes to everything and figured it out later. And so I started working on Rue and staying up all night and working on that and freelancing. And this was an awesome, awesome time for me because they let me see who I was, find out you know, what I liked, experiment with design. And it was just a really fun project to be working on with other people. Um, but it wasn't paying the bills, necessarily. It was, it was fine, but I had just quit my job. And I was like, this is all fun and great, but I've got like rent. LA is expensive. I eat out a lot. So <laughs> I got a call. Do you want to be a freelancer at the Game Show Network? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> It was in Santa Monica, first of all. So for those of you that live here, Silver Lake to Santa Monica, not great. It's kind of like death, really. <laughs> but I went over there, and they were really nice. And the job paid well. And I, they, they liked what I was doing, and it felt comfortable. A lot of things for me, I, I get really nervous that I'm going to run out of jobs. I said that yesterday. I'm like, what if I don't have any jobs? And my assistant's always like, dude, <laughs> like chill. But I took the job. It wasn't freelance. It was full time. So I was driving to Santa Monica. So at this time, I was doing Rue, the Game Show Network, freelance, and my blog. So I was basically never seeing anyone and glued to my desk at home. But I was learning a ton. I was, con I was getting really fast at what I was doing. I was 
I always say, like, even if you don't really love what you're doing as, you know, in your job, you're still learning something. You're still taking away something from that, even if that was, how can I make all this type that had to go on a TV banner ad look good together and read well? You know, you're going to just learn that kind of stuff, and you're going to use those skills later. So although the Game Show Network wasn't, like, wildly fulfilling for me, I was, like, retouching Drew Carey's face mm. and, like, doing these ads all the time, I still learned a lot, and I was comfortable. Freelancers, it can be difficult to feel comfortable. You're always feeling like you don't know what's next at all. It's constantly changing. There's no stability. So for me, something like this to have stability kind of grounded me at a time that was important. So I feel like I'm talking very fast. Mm -hmm. No? OK, good. So I was working at the Game Show Network and decided I was just going to take this and run. All of a sudden, you kind of hit a point in your career where it really feels like it's picking up, and you're getting a lot of emails, and I was literally just going, yes, 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 to everything. Didn't care. I'll stay up all night. I'll do it all. I was excited and happy to do it. So I was doing branding on the side. I was art director at the Fitum magazine. I was making websites, logos, all sorts of different things. Apparently really drawn to teal, pink, <laughs> and orange. Yeah. I mean, all this looks the same. That's embarrassing. So <laughs> <laughs> that's not all one project, but all different <laughs> projects. So I got to a point where I was like, OK, it's time to quit again. It's time to quit the Game Show Network and really give this a good shot. I think the first time, like I said, I wasn't ready. And this time I had taken on enough. I felt like I had learned enough to really, to really do it. So best decisions I've made have been the scary ones. This, of course, again, felt scary to start. But I, I remember even like when I got the FITM magazine job, I had just graduated college. And they're like, do you want to be the art director for this? I was like, sure. I didn't even know in design. I just Googled it until I figured it out. <laughs> Thanks, Fidom. <laughs> you know, but eventually I did that job for like five or six years. I, I feel like you just figure it out. If you want to do it, you'll, you'll find a way to do it. Um, quitting my job both times, blog shop, even something like investing in the space upstairs. It all feels kind of scary, like a big jump you don't know, but those have always been the best ones for me. So a few months after I quit, I was feeling... I was getting a lot of emails from people that were, how can I design my blog? I need a, a face, or Facebook buttons. I need a header for my blog. How can you help me do it? And I was getting quite a few of those. And so I was like, I need to just teach a big group of people at once how to do this and kind of knock this out at once. It was very efficient, I thought. So I told my friend, Angela, that I wanted to teach Photoshop. And she said, well, you should do it in my space. And so I had her come over to like hear my lesson plan. And I was like, oh, OK, well, I'll do this if you do it with me, because I'm too scared. Mm -hmm. And she was like, all right. So we put it up that night. I'll never forget. We were in the studio late. And we put it up that night. We, just, we, hadn't ha we didn't have a plan at all. We were just like, we're going to teach 25 people how to do Photoshop. We're not sure like, how that's going to go. Two days? Is that good? I don't know. <laughs> you know? Um, put it up, and in three hours, it was already sold. And so I was like, I guess we're doing this. Like, better figure it out. We had a month to figure it out. And we did. The first one I wanted to throw up. The day before, I was like, I don't know how to do this. You know, I had never really spoken in front of people like that. And it went awesome. It was like so amazing watching people know nothing about Photoshop to feeling so confident in their skills and like transforming their blogs. And it was like totally amazing. I loved it. So we're like, hey, you want to go to San Francisco? Teach one more? And now we've done 90. We just like couldn't stop. We found it as a way to just travel and meet people. And it was, it was very inspiring. And during that, my kind of inner Andy weed was coming out, and I became obsessed with the details. I wanted each event to feel different, 
and special to the students that they're paying a lot to be there and I wanted it to be an experience. So I was learning all about you know, how do people work best with each other? Tables that are shaped like a U, tables that are they're separated. You're learning all about people and how they interact and how they learn best and how they feel inspired. So, you know, I quickly learned that making their little desk when they get there, you know, very pretty and look great is going to set them up to feel good about the class. So I was obsessed with getting these goodie bags and decor and flowers and the whole, the whole nine yards. So I'm learning about the event design through blog shop, just learning a along the way. S around the same time that I started blog shop is when I moved into a creative, my first creative space with a bunch of the friends that I had met at that Root Magazine party. I remember I went on a walk with my friend Brian, who was right here, and he was like, hey, I need a space. And I was like, me too. I'm going crazy at home. I was just like going upstairs and go to sleep, go downstairs and work. Go upstairs, go to sleep, go downstairs and work, maybe go on a walk. Like it was not healthy. So when he said he needed a space, this one kind of landed in our lap and we all got together. For me, collaboration is key for the kind of projects that I'm working on. And just as a freelancer in general, it's so important to be surrounding yourself with people that are working equally or harder than you and you can see they're up all night too they're stressed out they don't know how to do their taxes either you know i'm just like do you know how to do this you know and they're like no you know and they all get the same accountant and it feels fine you know so this space was really really important to me i felt awesome at this time i felt like everything was picking up and now i had like my place so i can't tell you enough. I mean, come work here. It's just amazing to be around other people that, that want to work hard and meet people and be creative. I was also traveling everywhere with the class. I, I'm a really scared traveler. I am terrified of flying. I have to take Xanax. And I like sit there every time and I'm like, it's going down, you know, but it's, it still feels like that. But I got over it because of everything that I was seeing. The different cultures, the different design, the style in Stockholm, the buildings in Italy, like everything to your eyes if you just travel. If you can do anything, go places because it changes you as a person. It helped me grow up so quickly. I would say that the best way to learn is just by watching. Keep your eyes open and surround yourself with talented people. I get a lot of questions, you know, how do you how do you get followers? How do you get better? How, you just watch. You know, you really focus on what do you like and just watch. You know, it takes a long time. It doesn't happen over, over a matter of days. You know, I was looking at some of the pictures from my iPhoto and I'm like styling these peaches. It's like really terrible. I should have put it in here. I don't know why I didn't. It's really bad. It's just like two peaches and I thought it was like so artistic and like minimal. Not, it was not good. The lighting's awful. But you look at it enough. You look at enough styling and enough photography and then all of a sudden you're like, I kind of get this, you know? And it just, it takes a few years to kind of get to that point. And this is Jen. She made this picture. She's right there. She changed a lot for me. <laughs> So during this, Blog Shop was giving me that stability that the Game Show Network was giving me. So I was able to really explore what I like to do. I started columns, working with other people on my blog, hiring them to, to put their two cents in. And I started this style column. And this was just to just explore with different artists, different photographers, stylists. How can we make, recreate a scene from the 60s? How can we, you know, let's jump on a trampoline or be a jazz singer. Just that day you see something and it inspires a shoot and I try to just do it. You know, I work with as many talented people as you can, like I said. So the blog shops were teaching me a lot about event design. And I figured out, I really like this. I love having people in a room experiencing something great. And so I started doing a lot of workshops and parties, very similar to the blog shops, and going overboard. Joni is always telling me, like, you need to chill out on, like, going overboard. I can't. Like, I'm obsessed with it. I'm like, there's got to be a mimosa bar and this and that. You know, it's just, it's never enough. 
for me. I can't just like go to Trader Joe's and get cheese. Like I just can't do it. <laughs> but that's what makes you stand out, just like going overboard, you know, and really paying attention to those details. Then I was working with brands on the blog. The blog was growing. I was doing blog shop and all of a sudden I was like, the blog can make some money too because I'm putting so much energy and money into that. How can I work with brands but not make this space feel too salesy? So something that's very important to me is to always look at what I'm already doing, what I'm already inspired by. If I get approached by a brand that wants to work together, how can they fit into the content that's already happening on the blog? How can I make it feel natural? Because your brand is all you have. If you sell out on that, you can't really start over. So it's very important to me to always do genuine, natural, organic things together. So even for instance, like this Uggs campaign, they were like, what are you doing? What can you work on? And I'm like, hey, we're going to Spain. What if we document it? And you know, we include a product here, but not overboard. Maybe one picture. I'm not gonna do like every picture wearing like Ugg boots. Like, just don't go overboard. And if a company doesn't want to work with you, then move on. Because there is a lot of companies that want to do like genuine content. And the end is that I'm <laughs> grateful for this journey. Even though it's very confusing and scary. Looking back on it, it really does all click. And now I feel so comfortable and happy and still scared, but in a better place, looking back at all those scary jumps that I made. It's all worth it. And uh, that's it. <laughs>